We now have a mathematical formulism to describe polarization. We have the Jones vectors as part of the upcoming Jones calculus. Now we can think about how materials manipulate these things. So it all comes down to one word. So let's define the one word. And the one word is isotropic. In physics, isotropic means, here's my simple definition, same properties in all directions. And the opposite, if I were a dictionary and wanted to give you the opposite, I would say anisotropic, which just means that the properties depend on the direction. So let's think about an optical material. Let's think about a crystal. A crystalline material and its optical properties. Well, if you think about the atoms in a crystal, you might draw them as a perfectly square lattice, but they might not really be a perfectly square lattice. Crystals do all kinds of crazy stuff. So maybe you have them really close in one direction and really far away from each other in another direction, like this. So this crystal is inherently anisotropic. If you look at it this way, the atoms are spaced at a certain distance. If you look at it this way, the atoms are spaced closer. If you were to look at its optical properties and go back and do that polarization idea we did about when the light goes in a dielectric and it makes little dipole moments because it polarizes the electron or the, the charge, well, how much it polarizes it might depend on how close the neighboring electronic structure and electrons are, and the neighboring atoms and how they're bonded. Well, they're going to be bonded different this way than this way. So that effective spring constant of the electrons moving up and down as we hit it with light might be different along these two axes due to the difference um, in the crystal structure, in the spacing. So in crystals, you can potentially have uh, anisotropic optical properties. You don't have to. It could be that that spacing has no effect on whatever optical property you're looking at, or it could be the effect is so small that you basically don't see it. So sometimes it's, anis it's anisotropic, sometimes it isn't. However, the material that we love is glass, and almost the definition of a glass is that it is not a crystal. So I'm going to do a horrible job of drawing the glass structure of the SIs and Os everywhere, and I'm turning it into a crystal accidentally, and it's just amorphous. It is not crystalline. Things are just randomly bonded throughout, although they do obey the laws of chemistry, unlike how I'm drawing them here. And basically, there's no order. So on average, when the light pushes these around, uh, pushes the charge around in this material, every direction looks pretty much the same. At the very microscopic level, every one of them sees something a little different. But on average, it all looks the same. So the optical properties of something like glass are isotropic. So this one, uh, anisotropic, that one isotropic. So here is what really happens then. Optical elements manipulate polarization of light and remember the polarization of light, the definition is it's just the direction of the E-field. And we just talked about how the direction of the E-field will see different things depending on the material. Through anisotropy in the complex index of refraction. Remember this thing? We decided that the number, the property of the material that defines how light interacts with it, and we did it for a dielectric, was this number. The real part talked about how much the light slowed down when it got into the material and how much the wavelength changed. Or the, the, the frequency and time stays the same inside and outside, but the frequency, the wavelength and space changed and the speed changed. And this one describes, the imaginary part described the absorption. Okay. So that number turns out to explain Linearly polarizers, phase retarders, rotators, all that stuff. So now we're going to start going through those one at a time, but keeping in mind this big picture. We're talking about anisotropy in the complex index of refraction.